welcome everyone. Um, I would like to thank you already for the organization team for inviting me and also for setting up such a great moderation team, which is very, very related to my research. So it's my pleasure to present to you some research that I do on the recommendation behavior of Amazon, which I do together with Matthias and uh, Guillaume. So please let me know about any comments or feedback that you might have. Um, so you can send me an email or you can also just uh, write in the chat. Okay, so what is the motivation for my talk? Um, so we depart from that online marketplaces host a large number of suppliers and products, and they facilitate consumers to find what they are looking for by re giving recommendations. And when giving these recommendations, it's natural that platforms also consider their own interest. And uh, however, this raises some discussion. So especially in the context of hybrid sales platforms, which are platforms which uh, operate a marketplace, but at the same time act as a retailer on these platform, on this same marketplace, um, have become into an intense discussion. So specifically, there is the fear that the interests of consumers and hybrid platforms might not be well aligned. And uh, this fear is also reflected in current legislative initiatives, such as the Digital Market Act or the American Innovation and Choice Online Act. And uh, part of these initiatives is to prevent very large platforms from self-referencing their products at the expense of competitors. Of course, uh, for a, as a very large platform, which is hybrid, Amazon is a case in point. And uh, there's also a growing literature studying potential self-referencing behavior with respect to how Amazon might favor its own sales department by the so-called buy box. So uh, I think there will be also so people present here which study this question. But in our paper, what we want to do is we want to study a more subtle form of self-referencing. And as I will explain to you, this will consist in first not providing any supplier recommendation for a specific product. And then in the second step, if uh, then using distorted product recommendations to steer consumers elsewhere. But uh, what we have in mind is maybe better explained with a series of screenshots how Amazon works. So on Amazon, once you are interested in a specific product, so you end up at some product page. So here, for instance, we have a very popular card game called Uno. And this product page then gives you a lot of information about the product characteristics and also user feedback in the form of ratings and stars. So what you see here. Furthermore, as for this product here, often there are plenty of suppliers available. So for instance, as you can see right here, it's not, not that big. You can see that this product is offered by 39 distinct suppliers. Of course, most consumers do not have the time or also not have the inter interest to look at all of them. And therefore Amazon pre-selects one of them uh, on the right-hand side of the page. So this is here, and this is what we call the buy box. So for instance, in this buy box, what you can see is there is one seller promoted or featured, so which is called in prime time. And this is also a seller which uses Amazon to do the fulfillment. And once Amazon features a supplier in this buy box, it's very likely that a consumer interested in this product will choose to buy from it. And there are different studies which claim that over 80% of transactions are done with suppliers that are inside this buy box. And this should highlight to you the importance of this design element to steer consumers. Without surprise, it's many suppliers as well as researchers have been wondering about how to get into that buy box. Because uh, if you are one of the 39, you might imagine, okay, uh, it's uh, yeah, they have a high interest to be there, given that all the or most transactions are done over this design element. And a second question, which is more related to the policy perspective, is if this buy box is, uh, is, is somehow biased in favor of Amazon's own sales department. And this is also what others, for instance, my, my discussion studies. In our paper, we would like to study, uh, we would like to take a different route because we think there are many more ways to, to steer consumers towards other products. And this is what I will explain in, in a minute. So what's remarkable is that in a significant number of cases, Amazon does not feature any seller. So this can be seen here in this example on this slide. So here we have a very similar product. Uh, it's just a different variety of the same card game, you know, that I have shown you before. And what you can still see, you have the consumer feedback, you have the stars, you have the rating, 
And uh, you can also see that this product is available from 21 different suppliers. However, on the right-hand side, you don't see any buy box. So Amazon decided not to feature any of these suppliers and hence uh, something is different about this page design. So in case you still want to buy this product, what you would need to do is you would need to click on see all buying options. And then you could compare the 21 different offers available. It's debatable if this makes the purchase of the product more complicated, but at the same time, most people would agree that this deviation from the default design has the potential to create some confusion among consumers. And this confusion may even lead to, to a situation where some consumers think something is wrong. So maybe the quality of the supplier is not good, or maybe there's uh, another problem associated with this, with this product, and this might be detrimental for the sales. Of course, one might wonder, why would Amazon do this? Because Amazon, so if this is just detrimental for sales, uh, why would Amazon make it more difficult or make it um, create a situation where consumers are confused? So what Amazon claims, is um, that they do that in the interest of consumers. So specifically, in particular, if they say they may remove the buy box when, it be, when they believe to observe harmful pricing practices. And harmful pricing practices could be that the price of a product is higher than prices on or off Amazon. Of course, uh, this is, of course, a nice behavior. So if we say Amazon is very interested in getting a lot of consumers, then this uh, would be a good strategy, but we still believe that this is not straightforward. And we believe this behavior is interesting for two reasons. So one thing is that um, as Amazon is a hybrid sales platform, one might wonder if Amazon applies the same standards regarding harmful practices, um, especially in the cases when they also supply the product. So the question would be, is there a situation where Amazon thinks the price is too high when Amazon is also among the sellers? If not, this could hint an unequal treatment, which would be in favor of its own sales department. The second aspect why we think this is interesting is that if consumers are indeed confused by the absence of the buy box, um, as I said before, it could have the potential to reduce the product sales. And so even if this policy is only applied to third-party suppliers, Amazon potentially forgoes commission payments. And if consumers turn to buy somewhere else, then Amazon would even make losses in the short, short run. However, the latter point may only matter if Amazon then really loses these cons consumers. In practice, Amazon might achieve to increase the sales of other products by redirecting consumers to them. And specifically, consumers who search for a given product but do, do not see a buy box might be more attentive to other recommendations of Amazon for alternative products. And one might wonder then if, if this is the case, that consumers get more attentive to recommendations to something else, if Amazon is then using this uh, channel as a means to favor products where it's also selling itself. So these are essentially the aspects that we want to study in our paper. And for this, we have um, we do and conduct an empirical analysis of web script data from Amazon in the US over a period of four months. And then we proceed in two steps. So the first step we study, we investigate the buy box suppression itself. So specifically what we are interested in is to analyze under which circumstances Amazon really removes the buy box. So for instance, if this is really related to too high prices and also if these factors are different for Amazon's own offers. Uh, furthermore, we want to quantify if the removal of the buy box has an effect on sales. Uh, because then this would also give, give rise to the suspicion that, that you effectively steer consumers away from this local product. So this is what I will focus mostly in my talk today. In the second part of the paper, uh, what we want to do is to analyze potential follow-on effects of the buy box removal. In particular, we would like to know if consumers, once a buy box is not shown, are more attentive to alternative product recommendations and if this materializes also in more sales of other products. And for this exercise, we will focus on one type of organic product recommendations, which is called compare with similar items that I will explain later. And we will, for this design element, we will also study if, if we confirm that consumers are more attentive to these recommendations, if Amazon is leveraging this situation to steer consumers more towards products 
for which it is a supplier. Okay, so for those, uh, including Jacques, uh, who will not have much time, I do a preview of the results. Um, First, regarding the BIBOX suppression, so we, as I said, we study frequency determinants and effects of BIBOX suppression. And what we find is that Amazon always shows the BIBOX when it's selling itself a product, which suggests, or which could hint already an unequal treatment. However, if Amazon is not among the suppliers, we observe in our sample that it removes the BIBOX in 39% of the cases of our sample, particularly if it considers prices to be too, too high. Now that we know that, uh, or that we found out that Amazon is not, uh, that Amazon is never removing a buy box in our sample when it's selling itself. We try to apply the same policy for products when Amazon is among the suppliers. And if we do this kind of simulation, we find that Amazon would not be able to show a buy box in 13% of cases. Third, what we also find is that indeed the buy box suppression has an effect on sales. So we work with different approximations that we may discuss later. And what we find is that if a product does not show a buy box, then this reduces sales by 25 to 30%. Okay, this is for the first part of the paper. On the second part of the paper, whether there are follow on effects, essentially what we find is that products recommendations on pages where there's no buy box are associated with higher sales. So whenever you end up on a page where there's no buy box, then apparently consumers are more attentive to recommendations to other products. And uh, this materializes in higher sales and the effectiveness is almost twice as high. And regarding the question whether Amazon leverages this situation, what we see is that Amazon tends to steer consumers more towards product it sells itself if the buy box of the focal product is absent. And this is an indication of a uh, very sub to step referencing. Okay, do you have any questions so far? If not, then I would just, uh, one. Sorry, have you tried to look at the FBA versus FBN? Um, so we will discuss this as well, but uh, so maybe we can come back to that when we in the analysis. Yeah. Okay. So our paper relates broadly to three streams of literature. So first, there's a large theoretical literature in, in industrial organization highlighting that intermediaries may have incentives to distort recommendations, and it's clear that. Uh, Amazon is an intermediary and uh, of course, because of the commission income may also distort recommendations towards uh, something that consumers uh, would not be their first choice. Second, closely related, there's an increasing theoretical literature about distortions that may emerge from hybrid sales platforms. So hybrid sales platforms that act both at the marketplace, but also as a retailer. And this literature shows that businesses which might have these businesses might have incentives to distort recommendations in favor of their own products and services. However, the impact on welfare is not so clear because uh, yeah, the, the degree of distortion might be less severe than uh, in the case of a separated business. So naturally, Amazon is a, is a hybrid sales platform and we contribute to this literature by showing empirical evidence about this kind of steering behavior towards own products. Um, third, on the empirical side, there's an empirical large literature in, in marketing, which highlights that in the online context, the presentation of a product, so whether it's made very prominent or whether it receives a very good ranking, uh, may, may drive higher sales. And uh, specifically for Amazon, there's a growing literature also from marketing and IS, not only economics, which uh, mostly studies uh, whether how Amazon enters product markets and how Amazon makes the decision to uh, who to feature in the buy box and as well as how other product recommendations may be used for that referencing. And uh, we believe that we can contribute to this literature by providing yeah, like a new discussion on first the unequal treatment that Amazon may apply when, when deciding when, whether to show a buy box or not. And second, uh, a more subtle form of uh, steering, which which is by the combination of the absence of a supplier recommendation in order to make, to make a product recommendation more visible to consumers. Okay, I will describe now the data that we use in our analysis. So what we do is we use web script data from the US version of Amazon for a period of about four months. And our initial sample consists of the 50 best-selling products in 50 categories on Amazon. 
as we are somehow also interested in competition with other platforms, specifically with uh, prices on other platforms, we have further expanded this sample to include the same set of products which are very popular on the biggest competitor in the US, which is uh, walmart.com. And by including the very popular products on walmart.com, we end up with a sample of almost 4,000 products. And for these products, what we have done is we have collected daily data on product characteristics, on the decision to show a buy box, and on the availability of distinct sellers and the prices that they set. And we have done essentially the same collection also for the platform Walmart, although we use mainly here the price level on Walmart for the same products which are available on Amazon. And finally, we have also amended our data set with third party suppliers like, uh, like Keepa and others. Okay, for our analysis, we don't exploit the full detail of the data that we have. So in principle, we have more detail, but uh, to simplify a little bit the exposition, we use data, a data set where one observation is one product on a specific date. And by this, we have then around, uh, we have more than 270,000 observations where yeah, over the period of four months for these around 4,000 products. There are distinct things that, that I would like to highlight about our sample. So in a bit more than half of the cases, we see that Amazon is acting as a supplier. So you see there are, even among the top selling products, there are a lot of products which, uh, where Amazon is not active. Um, however, it's relatively rare that a product is only sold by Amazon. So for 92% of products in our sample, there's at least one third party seller. So this in turn means that only in 8% of the cases, only Amazon is available. For these third parties, which are in the sample, this can be uh, FBA sellers. So sellers which use the facilities of Amazon to do the fulfillment, or they or sellers which are called FBM, which use their own logistics to do the fulfillment. Okay. Um, most importantly for our study, the buy box is visible in only 83% of cases. Uh, of course, this might at first sight look, look like a very high number, but what I will show you the following is that if you condition the data set in a relevant way, uh, it's very frequent that the buy box is not visible. Okay, finally, as anybody might be wondering, indeed in 93% of the cases when a buy box is shown and Amazon is available as a seller in our sample, Amazon is, uh, is getting the buy box in 93% of the cases. Okay. For our analysis, we also dispose of a lot of other controls, like the sales rank, which is a good proxy for sales for those which don't have data from Amazon itself or from, from a large merchant. We also have information about the number of sellers offering the product, which can range to up to 280 different offers. And then we have other price information. So we have the manufacturer recommended sales price, and also we have information whether the product is available at Walmart or eBay. And we have also information about the respective prices. Okay, um, in this slide, I want to contrast a little bit first, the differences of product day observations where the buy box is shown and where it's not. So on the left-hand side, you see statistics for the product day observations when the buy box is visible. And here on the right-hand side, or on the middle columns, you see the same information when the buy box is invisible. So one thing that we see first is that uh, when the buy box is missing, so these columns, this never coincides with Amazon selling the product itself. And if we take this information into account, that um, the buy box is only missing or can only be missing if Amazon is not selling the product, then we can calculate that the buy box is not visible in 39% of these cases where Amazon is not among the sellers. Um, Second aspect that I want to highlight is the suppression of the buy box does not relate too much to the presence of suppliers which use the fulfillment by Amazon. So if we look at the relative frequency of an FBA seller being available, so FBA sellers being those which use Amazon facilities. So we see that the buy box is visible, when the buy box is visible, then in 48% of the cases, these high quality sellers are available, while it's only 44% when the buy box is invisible. So there is a difference, but the difference is not relatively large or at least it's not that large that would, as it could explain uh, that the Bible is not shown. What is a bit surprising is even that the number of offers um, when the Bible is not shown is 
substantially larger. So while we have here, when the buy box is visible, around eight offers on average, uh, this number increases to 14. So we have 14 different offers available when the buy box is, a, is invisible in our sample. And this makes it even more questionable why Amazon thinks none of them should be promoted because uh, among the 14, especially if we also see that the frequency or the presence of FBA sellers is not that low, one could, one could wonder why there's no, no one promoted. Finally, what we can also see, what we can also deduct a little bit also from the descriptives, although it's uh, with, with these type of variables, not always that, that clear. Uh, the negative log sales rank, which should be a measure of our for, for sales, we can see that products which uh, don't have a buy box apparently are less sold or are less often sold as reflected by this higher sales rank or by this more negative sales rank. Of course, this could be related of uh, because the product is not popular, but it could also be an effect and it could be an effect of the buy box removal. But this is of course something that we need to study econometrically. Okay, what's more important probably is uh, how the suppression of the buy box relates to prices. And for this, I have prepared uh, this nice chart. So what we see here is the fraction of pages or product day observations without buy box in relation to the price difference of the minimum Amazon price compared to different benchmarks. So for instance, we compare the minimum price on Amazon to the price on Walmart, on eBay, or to this manufacturer recommended sales price. And what we can already see here is that there's an increasing pattern. So uh, the more expensive products are on Amazon, the more likely this buy box is removed. And specifically for the case of Walmart, what we can see is if the Amazon minimum price is 10% higher than the price on Walmart, we already see that in 80% of the cases, there's no buy box. And this should highlight that apparently Amazon cares a lot about the relative price difference to other competing marketplaces. Okay. As these descriptive tables cannot account for, or this chart cannot account for the heterogeneity between products and sellers and their availability, we also confirm these initial observations econometrically. So specifically, we estimate a linear regression model to explain the decision of Amazon to show the buy box or not. Um, so the dependent variable is an indicator taking value one if the buy box is shown. And the explanatory variables, briefly speaking, are product market characteristics, such that the availability of certain supplier types, a lag measure for demand, and the minimum NIM price. Furthermore, we control for prices on competing products and sales channels, and as well as for product and date fixed effects. Okay, and when we do this, then our results that we got from the graph are largely confirmed, but let's maybe go one by one. So first of all, what we see is that the presence of a high quality seller has some effect on the presence of the buy box. So here, depending on the specification, we see that the likelihood that the buy box is shown increases by seven to nine percentage points. Um, surprisingly, we see that there is a negative correlation between the buy box presence and the number of sellers. But uh, yeah, these effects are not that large. What's maybe more important is um, the effects of the price. Here we see strong effects. So for instance, the higher the minimum price on Amazon, the less likely a buy box is shown. Um, we can then also see how these, uh, the comparison to some benchmarks also affects the likelihood of a buy box being shown. For instance, what we see here is that if the price on war, uh, no, if the price on Amazon is higher than the minimum, the max, the manufacturer recommended sales price, this also decreases the likelihood of a buy box being shown. The same goes for a comparison of the product price with an average of other products on Amazon. And finally, what we see and where we also see the largest effect, if a price, if the price of a product on Amazon is higher than the price of the same product on Walmart or eBay, then we see that the that uh, the likelihood of the buy box being shown is reduced by 22 percentage points. Okay, so it seems that, that the competition between the marketplaces has the largest impact on the buy box suppression compared to within platform motors. Okay, there are no questions I would maybe go on. So 
Now that we have seen before that the buy box is always shown when Amazon is among the suppliers, one might wonder whether this stems from that fact that Amazon is always acting as a good supplier. So Amazon using its own fulfillment could be considered as high quality supplier. And also Amazon as a large platform or as a large seller could also offer very competitive prices. So which in turn could justify that we observe in our sample that the buy box would never be removed. However, to see whether this is the case, we want to do an exercise where we essentially proceed in the following steps. So we first take the observations where Amazon is not a seller to calibrate a model which predicts if the buy box should be shown or not. And then we take this model in the second step to the data where Amazon is among the sellers to do an out of sample prediction if a buy box should be shown or not. And if we essentially see that the buy box uh, should always be shown by this prediction, then we know, okay, Amazon, or this could be an indication for an equal treatment of Amazon's own sales department and third party suppliers. But if we don't see that, then this could be an indication of unequal treatment. Okay. So step by step. So if we, so here in this table, what we have is we have on the left column one to three, we have um, the observations where Amazon is acting as, uh, is not acting as a seller. And as I said before, we see that uh, the buy box is only visible in around 64% uh, of the cases. We use different models like OLS or Logit in order to, which are very similar to, to the model that I have shown you before. Um, and we find also that this, the predictive power of these models are relatively good. So we correctly predict uh, whether there should be a buy box or not with 50, 85 to 87% of the cases. Um, on column four and five, we then have the data where Amazon is, uh, is a seller, where in the real existing data, we have observed that Amazon is always showing a buy box when it's among the sellers. If we use then these different models from the data where Amazon is not selling to predict in the cases where Amazon is selling, whether there should be a buy box, then indeed we see there should be cases where Amazon should not recommend themselves. Um, specifically, what we see so in the different models is that uh, the buy box should not be shown in 13 to 14% of the cases. Uh, why is this is the case? So on the one hand, we also observe that uh, Amazon is sometimes not the cheapest sales channel available on the internet. So even if, uh, um, so for instance, Walmart or eBay might be cheaper. And then even then uh, Amazon shows a buy box possibly promoting its own offer. And second, what we have also done is we treated Amazon as a seller that is as good as a fulfillment by, fulfilled by Amazon, like an FBA seller, which also decreased uh, this number. However, if we would uh, treat Amazon as a FBM seller, for instance, then this, this num these numbers would be much closer to these numbers here. Okay, I see in the chat there is a question. Okay. Oh no, that was um, stuck. okay. Okay. Um, as a final step of this analysis of the buy box suppression, uh, we can wonder if consumers do not see a buy box, whether this affects the likelihood of a purchase. And um, unfortunately, of course, I don't have state data available as most researchers which do research about Amazon, and therefore I have to substi uh, substitute this data by other data that is available. And uh, like in other studies, I use the sales rank, which is published regularly by Amazon, um, which is information for each category, how often, uh, or which, who, which are the most frequently sold product. And the good thing about this variable is that it negatively correlates with the sales. And um, what we do is then we adopt a model similar as Reimers and Waldvogel uh, last year in AR for a study about book sales and uh, estimate a conditional adjustment model, which is uh, we explain the minus log negative, we explain the negative log sales rank by the lag negative log sales rank, an indicator of uh, uh, taking value one when the buy box is not available, and then essentially controlling for the same factors as before. So product market characteristics, um, product fixed effects, and then combinations of the category and the day fixed effects. 
Okay, if we do this, uh, what we can observe is that indeed, when the buy box is invisible, this decreases the, the sales. So um, how good do we get to this interpretation? So as I said here, the dependent variable is the next sales rank. So first, what we need to do is we need to do an adjustment for the conditional adjustment model. And if we do this, then we would find, we would be left with a message that the buy box suppression worsens the sales rank by 50 to 60%. Um, as this is very difficult to interpret what this means, uh, 50 to 60% of the sales rank, uh, we then in the second step apply a conversion, uh, which is based on pre previous studies, which had access to, to Amazon data or Amazon sales data, which approximate the relationship of a sales rank change to, to sales change. And what comes out is that essentially a good approximation is that, um, that the effect has to be has to be divided by two such that we end up with a um, with a decrease of sales of 25 to 30 percent. What's interesting is um, that we get to this conclusion even when controlling for the fact that okay that the price might be higher so prices indeed have a uh, decreasing effect on sales. We also see that if a price is relatively high to the Amazon category then this also decreases and specifically we also see that apparently uh, there is, we can also measure inter-platform comp um, competition here. So if the price on, uh, on Amazon is higher than the price on Walmart or eBay, this also decreases sales. And even then we still find a sizable effect uh, of um, 25 to 30% um, when doing this. Okay. Good, so I would be done with the first part of, of the paper, which was about the buy box itself. So in the second part of the paper, what we aim to study is the question whether there are follow on effects of this buy box suppression. Why? Because as I have explained at the beginning, um, it is a bit surprising that Amazon would make it more difficult or more complicated for a consumer to, to buy the product, specifically in the market for, for third party products. And why is this puzzling? Because Amazon is essentially making its income from commissions then. And if a product is not sold, uh, then this of course decreases, decreases this commission income and then could also lead to a decrease in profits. However, if Amazon is uh, able to, to steer consumers to other products, this might not be, this might not be uh, too relevant. And this is essentially what we want to study in this second part. Um, so our idea here is that when there is no buy box for a specific product I, so remember the Uno game, like the, the Lila one without buy box, then the purchase process is more costly for buyers, or at least uh, consumers are, uh, are somehow uh, incentivized to think that something is wrong and therefore, therefore don't want to buy this product. Um, it's plausible that consumers will partly continue to search on Amazon, and then recommendations to other products might then become more relevant. And especially what we have in mind is that on each product page, so even the product pages without a buy box might have a lot of recommendations to other products. And what we would ask now in the first step is for the recommended products, J, which received more product purchases when being recommended on a product I page without a buy box. Okay. I would like and, just a reminder yes. you have five minutes left. Okay. Um, okay, and to see what we have in mind. So um, there are different recommendations to other products and one that we will focus on is this compare with similar items table. Uh, what is good about this one is that it's a non-sponsored form of recommendation. So manufacturers cannot buy in order to be promoted there. And it's also present for most of the products and it's directly accessible for, from the top of the page. And what it does, it allows an easy comparison of with up to five other similar products. And uh, for the products that we have considered, uh, where we have, were in the first part of the paper interested whether they have a buy box or not, we have also collected this information about the comparison table, which is shown on this table. And um, so first thing that we want to establish is whether recommendations of the, on these tables have an effect on sales of these other products. For this, we have estimated a similar uh, sales model than uh, that we did before for the buy box suppression. 
And what we indeed see is the more a product is recommended on other pages uh, within this compare with similar items tables, then we see that the sales are higher. And the second step, we distinguish whether these recommendations come from pages of products which have a buy box and those which don't have a buy box. And what we observe is that essentially uh, recommendations from tables which are below a, are on a page without buy box are more effective. So what you can see here is that the effect of a recommendations of, of, a, of another product page without buy box is almost twice as high. Finally, we would like to see whether Amazon is using this higher visibility of the comparison table to promote more often its own products. And our idea would be an independent marketplace operator should not make the composition of this comparison table products uh, dependent on the buy box present or not. And um, while an integrated operator, so like Amazon, may alter the composition as the demand effect is higher without buy box. So what you see here yes. is. Yes. Does Amazon say how it sets the comparison table? Because this is not through ads. So I was wondering, does it say anything about how it chooses those products? Um, we have not looked into this specifically, but if it's not about uh, if it's not about ads, then usually they would say this is about prices and uh, product quality again. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what this chart should show you is that products that Amazon sells are then more often in the comparison table, especially when the buy box is not visible. So what you see here is the proportion of products which are in this uh, by Amazon, which are in this comparison table, compared to the proportion of uh, compared to to the presence of these products in the product space. And what you while you can see already here that even when the buy box is visible there is some kind of over-representation of Amazon products in this comparison table. This over-representation of Amazon products is much more severe in the case that there was no buy box. Especially when the frequency or the relative frequency of Amazon products in the product space is relatively low. So if you have, for instance, 20% uh, of Amazon products in one category, what you can see is that um, Amazon tends to steer consumers much more to awards its own products when there's no buy box. Okay, we can also compare, confirm this with a regression analysis, but this one I will skip. So let's get to my conclusion so I stay more or less in time. So the findings of our study are as follows. So Amazon tends to hide the buy box if it perceives prices too high, but only when it's not acting as a seller. Second finding that I would like to highlight, the buy box suppression decreases demand for a product on the Amazon marketplace and amplifies the sales enhancing effect of product recommendations on the same page. And third, when uh, in such a situation, we also observe that Amazon tends to steer more towards own products when the buy box is suppressed. Um, what do we take from these findings? So we would like to highlight some, some aspects about this. So first one is that the fact that we only observe that the buy boxes can be suppressed when Amazon is not present is an indication of a different treatment of third-party offers and is also a sign of intransparency of the, of the behavior of Amazon. Second, the fact that we observe that purchases are less likely when there's no recommendation highlight that there's a search friction for consumers. So consumers which would be interested in buying this good are somehow confused uh, by this policy of Amazon, and this might also be detrimental for consumers. Third, um, another risk of this policy from our perspective is that if Amazon conditions uh, the prominence of products or the prominence of, of uh, supplier offers uh, on prices on competing marketplaces, this can provide similar incentives as a price parity clause. So we don't say that Amazon is replicating a price parity clause or something like this, but we just want to highlight that this can be the risk that it provides similar incentives to, to condition the prominence of products on prices somewhere else. And finally, for, for the part that I have shown you very briefly, we also provide subtle uh, evidence for a subtle form of step preferencing. So we see that when uh, Amazon abstains from recommending a specific seller, then this makes consumer more attentive to other product uh, recommendations and Amazon effectively uses this also by distorting the recommendations more towards its own product. 
Uh, with this, I'm gladly done in time. So thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy about any of your comments. Yeah, so thanks uh, Ulrich for your great presentation. And uh, so we are happy to have Davish to discuss this paper. And meanwhile, if you have any question, uh, welcome to type in the chat or uh, you know talk after the discussion. Um, hold on one second, let's see. All right, uh, thank you all for, um, for this. So I, I really enjoyed this paper. I thought it was very clear. This is something I've actually wondered a lot about. And um, I think I learned a lot from this paper about what Amazon is doing. So I wanna start with some screenshots. So these are screenshots that took about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. So this is some kind of tire sealant. And you can see in green, the buy box is suppressed. But if you look in red, there are a bunch of sellers. And if I go to the next slide, you know, there's a FBA seller for $29.99, which is, you know, have, has a lot of ratings and a large percent positive. There are other sellers as well. So it's sort of a, a mystery of why is it that Amazon is not allowing you to just buy the product in the buy box. Um, so I also looked at the comparison table. And what you find here is that all the comparisons are to different sizes of this product sold by Amazon itself. Um, so everything is exactly in line with uh, Ulrich's paper. Um, and so finally, yesterday I looked back, so this is a year and a half later, and now there is a buy box, but it is Amazon selling the product. <laughs> and for maybe about a 10% higher price than the third parties are selling a year and a half ago. Um, so this seems to be a, a pretty ubiquitous thing. Uh, so the question is, what's the, what's the mechanism? What's driving it? Um, so I'm gonna give you two different views. And I think my, my advice to Ulrich is to maybe talk a little bit more about the second view. The first view is that Amazon wants to prevent price gouging. Now, Jeff Bezos has said, well, <laughs> he doesn't care about price gouging, uh, but consumers care a lot about price gouging. In Congress now, there are multiple bills about price gouging. As you might imagine, Amazon doesn't want to get the appearance that its marketplace is price gouging. So there are a couple of things it could do. One is it could sell the product itself, where it can set the price itself. Um, it could potentially match other marketplaces. The second is that it can reduce the sales of products that are being price gouged, either by suppressing the buy box or by steering away through recommendations. And no one can show evidence of both of these. Um, now, I want to make a couple comments here. First of all, there's a, as Ulrich said, a subtle form of self-preferencing. Only Amazon is allowed to price gouge. Um, and it's very clear here, you know, if you know anything about Amazon's pricing, Amazon does price match competitors. And as Ulrich showed, showed us, they are monitoring eBay and Walmart, but they seem to have made the decision not to price match eBay, eBay and Walmart marketplace, which is why their product is often priced higher but they're punishing third parties that, that price higher. Um, so you could imagine a, a strategy of Amazon to price match eBay and Walmart. And then this idea of self-preferencing would in some sense go away because Amazon would have the same prices. And there's another view of this, um, which is that this is about sort of a most favored nation clause to the back door. Um, so the DC government recently filed a lawsuit, which I, I recommend the authors to look at um, calling this an antitrust violation. And if you look at the history of this, Amazon used to have price parity provisions, which basically said, you can only sell on our platform if you're not selling below on competing platforms. So if, you, if you're a seller, you sell on less on Walmart or eBay, you're not allowed to sell on Amazon. That was eliminated first in Europe and then in the US because of regulator concerns, or antitrust concerns. And instead they have what they call a fair pricing policy. Um, but part of that is that they suppress the buy box if it's a higher price than competitor websites. It's not clear if this is different than the price parity provision or not. But this could be a, maybe a more broad way to do it where there's not an explicit agreement on the price that the third party sells, but you can get the same thing. Um, so what I was wondering is you know, is the DC, so in the DC lawsuit case, they say they basically say their fair pricing policy is just the same as the MFN contracts as before. This is anti-competitive and a violation of the antitrust laws. 
Um, so there's a question of, is DC right or not? And then what's going on with consumer welfare? Um, so if you think about the first mechanism of price gouging, you would think that suppressing the buy box might lower prices because it's gonna force the third parties to lower their price or they're gonna lose a huge amount of sales. But if this is about third parties selling for cheaper on eBay or Walmart, this might raise prices because you know, they, they get the message and they raise their prices on other platforms. Um, so I think that the main thing that I would like from this paper is to, to talk a little bit more about who is selling on eBay and Walmart is it the same merchants as Amazon, which would be sort of like a PP, like the price provision thing, or is it others? So this is, for example, Walmart is selling for less, Walmart, the retailer is selling for less than Amazon. It looks a lot like the price gouging. Whereas if this is the third party Amazon is also selling on Walmart marketplace, it looks a lot more like the second view. Um, there's a lot of regulatory interest on the second view. And I think um, if I were the authors, I'd play that up more. But the more you can get at that, you know, so if you could have a statistic of when Amazon suppresses the buy box, X percentage of the time, third parties on the Amazon platform are selling for cheaper on Walmart or eBay. Um, I think that would really inform a lot of the antitrust debate. Um, so with that, I have to thank, uh, I encourage all of you to read this paper and I, it, uh, it is very nice and clear. So thank you.